in the abolitionist movement, Uncle Tom's Cabin was this sensation. It's it's probably a moment when literature kind of determined politics in a way that was quite staggering. Maybe I'm over exaggerating, but it was had a huge psychological impact on America. Now, Black Beauty, which is this book about a horse, by a horse, in the in the in the voice of a horse, published in England, right by this by a, by an unknown woman, and then becomes this sensation. Tell, can you? What is the story of Black Beauty briefly? Yeah. So, so yes, it was published in England in 1877 by Anna Sewell, who was a, you know, a housebound. I, I, people today think maybe she had lupus, some sort of, some sort of condition, progressive degenerative condition that made it very difficult for her to write. It's a sort of famous story of, a, of an author being completely screwed over by their publisher. She, I think it was for 20 pounds or maybe 40 pounds, I think it's 20 pounds, sold over the rights. And it was a modest success in England, but wasn't published in the United States. And then 13 years later, George Angel in Boston gets his hands on a copy. And what's sort of funny is that to your point about Uncle Tom's Cabin, is that from very early on, George Angel said to himself, we need an Uncle Tom's Cabin for the problem of cruelty to horses. It was something that he had been going around saying to people and thinking. And then somebody sends him this book and he says, here it is. And he immediately just pirates the book. He doesn't, he doesn't write anybody. He doesn't, he doesn't ask anything. He just, he just has the book. He, he, has the book sort of typed up and just begins printing it in huge quantities. And really the the, the fact that Black Beauty has become the kind of international sensation that it, it became really owed itself to, to, to that. Because at that point, people start to translate it into other languages. It spreads beyond, it spreads beyond the US and England. It spreads beyond English. And in the first year of doing that, he actually sells more copies than than famously the, the the figure that Uncle Tom's Cabin sold in its first year, which was would, had been stood as this kind of symbolic record standing to, to, to kind of how big of a deal it had been. Black Beauty surpasses that. And it so we're talking how many hundreds of thousands? Yeah, hundreds right. of thousands. I can't remember the figure exactly, but it was I think more than one hundred and fifty thousand in the first year, something like that. It was a lot of um, the other thing that I think. And Anna Sewell is sitting there in England. Is she dead she yet? Dies. Yeah, she, she, she dies. <laughs> she dies very soon. In fact, I actually think she dies maybe before the book comes out. She she dies very soon, either right before or right after the book's publication. Her, her publisher gets very angry and sends sends George Angel a series of threatening letters, but do, there's no real mechanism for them to 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 take him to court over it. And he he sort of makes his case in public. He he makes he he acknowledges that the publisher has been angry about it. He 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 says, oh, you know, you didn't pay her enough anyway. And also I'm not making any money off of this, which was probably true that that he he was selling partly why it became such a sensation is he was selling it for a very, very low price. He really did see this as as evangelical. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting about the response to black beauty from present from a present day perspective is, you know, we've really come to think of it as a book for children, but it wasn't written as a book for children. And in its initial the initial response to it wasn't in those terms at all. I mean, there, the, I, I found in researching the critical response, you know, there was this, this serious book criticism journal called The Critic. I'd never heard of it until researching this. And, and you find their rave review of Black Beauty between a review of a Schopenhauer translation and a Balzac translation. So it seems inconceivable today. You just read the book, both in the sort of the simplicity of the language, the animal perspective, the, the first person animal perspective, which, of course, we now associate with children's literature, and then also the sort of sentimentality of it. But in in all respects, the literary culture of that era was just very different, that 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 naked appeal to sentiment. I mean, that was Uncle Tom's Cabin in a nutshell. Right. I mean, part of what makes it hard to read that book today is the, the register on which it's written has, has become very unfashionable, but that, but at the time that was seen as a very vital function of literature and the animal narrator, which feels like old hat to us, feels kind of kid booky, actually, I think seems sort of innovative. 